Uh, and I'd like to bring on um, Phil Hunt, Director of Hunt Consultings. Phil? There we go. Good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you for being here to explore this, um, this subject of, of um, building a customer-focused sale, sales culture. It's a fairly lofty kind of title, don't you think? Um, sounds a little corporate, especially after the insights that we got this morning. Um, so I just want to start by breaking this down, and, uh, and then I'll move into, um, into the discussion. So, firstly, sales, sales culture. You know the smarmy, cheesy, stereotypical, always be closing sales kind of person? That's not what we're talking about here. Has anybody heard about the line of um, sincerity in business? Nobody? The line is the key to, uh, key to success in business is sincerity. Once you've learned to fake that, you've got it made. Not talking about that here. Um, all I mean in terms of sales and sales culture is A, understanding customer need, B, aligning capability to that need, and then C, out pops the value. We've heard a lot of examples of that this morning. Um, I work in corporate land and it is a never ending battle to stop people pushing product um, and actually get them to listen to the customer and to uh, get them to create the value. So that's, that's the first piece, sales culture. Second piece, customer focus. So we all walk in and around and we get value out of what we buy, hopefully. Um, you might get value simply, this is a little technical, simply out of the product or the service that you buy. Doesn't involve a lot of interaction. You might be running a business, uh, you buy, you go into Officeworks, whatever, you buy it, then you walk out. That's the end of a transaction. But I heard a lot of this this morning. It's when the value from the product or service actually exceeds the intrinsic value from, sorry, it's when the customer gets value that is exceeding the intrinsic nature of the product or service, that's when we're starting to turn the customer into somebody who's very loyal, interested in doing business with us. Um, so in business speak, when the customer sees that true connection to what they're looking to achieve, accomplish, etc., cetera, um, that's when they start buying in to a relationship with us. And that is one part of a definition of being cu customer focused. It's looking through the eyes of the customer, not through our eyes. Um, so that involves collaboration. So in the business sense, that might be you know, achieving better business results, reducing costs, improving productivity, et cetera, for your client. Uh, it might be expanding or increasing competitive advantage. Uh, it might be actually going up to really helping in terms of business strategy. One of the best examples I've heard of that is um, uh, Papa Gino's and the Coca-Cola company. Papa Gino's, American pizza chain. They were looking to expand into uh, South America and they were a Pepsi client. So all of their beverages, um, were being bought from Pepsi and right throughout their hundreds and hundreds of uh, pizza places, they were selling uh, Papageno's, uh, they were selling Pepsi products. They made a strategic decision to move into South America. And someone at Coke got wind of that. This is about 15, 20 years ago. Well, Coke has and always been extremely strong in South America. Um, and so what they did was essentially speak to Papageno's and said, um, if, um, if we explain the marketplace, the demographics, show you uh, supply chains, etc. We'll open up the whole of South America to you. Uh, all we want is 100% of your business. And uh, Pepsi lost the account, Coca-Cola won it, and the rest is history, because Papa Gino's accelerated probably 10 years faster than that, what they would have done. So that's an area where, right up a strategy level, uh, you, can, um, you can help an org organisation. So all of this important this is important because, at least in my view, customer-centric organisations are more successful than non-customer-centric organisations. Um, and I suppose that's a bit of a no-brainer, really, but it's relevant to the, the whole purpose of this conference, powering growth. If you work in a cu customer-centric business, fair chance that um, staff satisfaction is higher, 
people stay longer. It's relatively easier uh, to grow. Um, profitability should be higher because you're keeping clients for longer. Um, and because you work so much closely with the client than a non-customer-centric business, you're far more likely to innovate. When you innovate, it's obviously better to the customer because you're right up close to that customer and their needs. Um, better for staff because they're expanding their horizons, they're getting better at what they do and obviously you're helping the company grow. So when I compare my world, um, mainly corporate stuff, to what I've seen this morning um, and thinking about the challenges like of the Invictus Games and how you're going to align an organisation around um, uh, such an incredible cause, we think about the, the six CEOs that uh, are thinking about their business strategies this morning. I'm thinking the, um, the, uh, the organisational challenge is really to create a team that is customer focused to achieve that sort of sales culture. So as a basic premise to that, uh, an organisation that's customer centric has a share, set of shared beliefs, uh, investments in innovations that are based on the perception of, in this case, our organisation um, through the eyes of the customer and the value they can achieve in dealing with us. Same for the events and all the things that I heard uh, being discussed this morning. And well, this is what I heard this morning in terms of the central idea. What if we could operate our organisations individually and probably more, more importantly, collectively, um, so everyone attending an event feels like a special guest where they personally value the event's unique purpose. And that, that crew, that group of people, whether they be employees, contractors, suppliers, right along the supply chain, see a common purpose in achieving that. Various shades of, of, of different customer relationships and uh, engaging with the customers is what I heard this morning. And there are some organisations dealing with who, who are kind of operating at that level. And so uh, this afternoon, that's uh, what I want to talk about. Who can tell me where this comes from? Exactly, Disney Corporation. Um, and in Googling this, I had to go through about 1,700 screens before I actually just found those words rather than Beauty and the Beast. Be our guest. Uh, Disney is an organisation that has invested in exceeding customer ex expectations for over 90 years. So this afternoon, we're going to have a look at Disney as well as a number of other organisations. Um, so what I intend to do here is to explore the subject of customer-focused customer sales culture from three perspectives. One, <clears throat> have a look at customer experience basics, some recent research and some examples from global organisations about what they're doing in terms of engaging more and, uh, and practising the art of customer experience. Second, to use some research and a model developed by Miller Hyman on building a customer focused sales culture. Third, to give some examples of how organisations are aligning themselves into the brand promise that they're providing to their customers and delivering on that, on that sales culture. Can anyone tell me that what the core element of the Disney brand promise is? It's happiness. Happiness. It's nice to hear that in this corporate sort of world. Um, uh, so their, their, um, their brand promises, we create happiness by providing the finest entertainment for people of all ages everywhere. They do that through their media networks, Disney Channel, ABC, ESPN, their parks experience and their cruise lines, um, and their studio, studio entertainment, including uh, Marvel and Pixar. Must be a great place to be in that sort of organisation. Disney calls their customer experience infrastructure their practical ma magic, and they've been aligning and refining that for decades. A few examples. Somebody worked out that if you go get a hamburger at a theme park, uh, in a short amount of time, you're going to go and want to throw the, the, uh, the package, the, the paper away. 27 feet is what their research identified. So we're talking about data here in terms of what comes first, marketing or the business plan. Um, and admittedly, they've been doing this for a long time. So every 27 feet, there's a rubbish bin in a Disney park. Um, if you go on a Disney cruise, you go under the water, your cabin's underwater, there's still a porthole. And that's got a little AV system in it. And if you look through that porthole, 
they're still um, what you would see if you were up above the water. But what they then do is every once in a while, Mickey or Goofy or someone will go floating past on a lilo. Um, employees are called cast members. Interviews are called auditions. Um, and the cast is always attentive. It's part of their culture. It's part of their reason for being. And you're not going to see Goofy off on a corner uh, looking at their mobile phone, um, not in a Disney park. They have, have evolved a rigorous and dynamic process to ex exceed customer expectations. That's their culture. Um, so as we move through this, I'm just going to talk about customer experience basics. Um, and can I just get a show of hands? Who has a role or has had a role who is designing the customer experience for your organisation? Okay. Um, this is a very basic published example of a customer journey. In this case, it's just going to see a movie. Um, my wife and I, we're currently doing the let's make sure we see all the Academy Awards nominees ideally before the night. Um, and so this is pretty typical of our journey. Um, we hear about the movie, we do some research, and sooner or later we walk into the cinema. Now, where we live, there are five independently owned cinemas um, that we can go to any day of the week. Prices are much the same. Session times are very similar. Um, all very easily accessed. Food is the same. It's expensive. Um, and it's staffed by kiosks or by teenagers. So in this world, how do they differentiate so that we're going to go to that cinema to see the same movie at the same time, eating the same food at the same cost? So here's some... Um, uh, sort of 101 for customer experience. First of all, defining moments. Defining moments are often referred to as the moments of truth when a judgment is formed. By the way, there are booklets down here. Uh, I wasn't sure about the audience, whether there were big corporates and, and um, uh, the smaller sort of events. Um, so I'm pitching this presentation as what the, what the majors do to see the opportunities and give those sort of examples. In the... Um, in the uh, handout down there that says some basic examples of customer experience modelling and, and some other things which I hope you find useful. Defining moments, these moments are mapped by organisations with behaviours and processes to build loyalty. Um, and so you'll see some basic templates. Research also identified customer needs falls into two categories. And for the, for the purpose of this presentation, I just want to talk about human needs that all the research points to. What is it that we actually want out of service? And that is respect, simplicity, respect, responsibility, simplicity, and solution. Respect, treat me as a customer, show me that I'm valuable, and um, just make eye contact. Uh, it's pretty basic, but I don't know about how you found it, but because I'm doing this today, I've been watching this as I walk in and out of a whole range of places, and the eye contact piece is starting to be driving me mad. Um, Responsibility. Take responsibility that I am the customer uh, and understand and ideally value the reason that I'm here. Simplicity. Don't give me any of that organisational rubbish. I'm here for the event. I don't need to know what's going on in the back office of your organisation. Solution. Help me make decisions. If something, for example, goes wrong, let's talk about what the options might be. Um, there was an enormous study through the 80s and 90s, a guy called Neil, Neil Rackham, consulting gig from heaven. Um, he identified um, some value drivers in terms of differentiating and um, exceeding customer experience. Now, these are corporate speak value drivers. Um, unseen opportunity. I never realised that there was an opportunity like this that I can actually um, take some advantage of. Unanticipated solution. I never thought I could actually see it this way. Uh, unrecognised problem. This thing is coming around the corner and I didn't even know. Now, I'm sure that there are some analogies in the event world and these are value drivers that drive uh, customer relationships all over the world. So, let me just talk about some uh, more research um, that in, uh, in a book that was just published just over 12 months ago called um, The Power of Moments. If you get a chance, I'll suggest you read it. Um, and as you're reading, the, there's going to be three slides on this. But first, I just want to talk about the first part of the book, which talks about human nature. So we're going to an event, um, and this is what the authors found as they, um, as they researched. 
we tend to remember the worst and the best of things. We are most comfortable when things are certain. We are most alive when things are not comfortable. Um, and defining moments comprises peaks, pits and transitions. So then they did a lot of research in terms of those peaks and those trans peak and transitions in terms of wh what are the um, current organisations, contemporary organisations doing around that sort of space. It's an interesting book. You know how it, it talks about um, how life seems to speed up as you get older and uh, all of a sudden, you know, before we know it, it's going to be 2020. It explains why that is and what's going on inside of our heads as we experience different things. So first of all, uh, in terms of defining moments, the first concept they propose is elevation. Build peaks. Create truly memorable experiences. Create intensity, excitement and engagement. Now, has anybody seen the part of the Sydney Opera House website called Backstage? If you go into Backstage on the Opera House website, what it does is show you um, uh, the first, uh, first, the last two minutes before they go on stage and they're filming the band or, or the artist and they are as nervous as all get out. They're doing things to, um, to help them get ready for going on stage and then they show the first 30 seconds on stage. So as you look at it, you get excited. You start to, uh, you really, your experience is elevated in terms of your relationship with the Sydney Opera House. The um, Junior Report is the World Tennis Association. When kids are going to a tennis event, um, I'm not sure how they find them, but they get them and they go backstage and they interview some of the top tennis players in the world. And the tennis players know that it's part of their job to make that happen. Now, kids interviewing players isn't necessarily that new, but what they do in terms of promoting that through social media is something that is extending the relationship with, uh, with their audience. Break the script. Break the script, change the way the experience is usually delivered, create surprises. Um, the World T Tennis Association in the next 12 months is gonna be spending a lot of time um, getting their up and coming tennis stars to engage with their audience. And part of their aim is so that the audience engages with the audience and creates their own sense of excitement. Um, the Art Gallery of New South Wales has put in place a CRM driven engagement process, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Insight. Um, cr let the customer, let the audience get more and more insight through the event that you're in. Um, create moments of personal in insights. So Disney has a corporate philosophy called learn and be curious. Um, people are measured by that. Um, again, direct conversations with fans, the World um, Tennis Association, and the next point is stretch for insight. So what the WTA is doing is conducting polls and votes on a regular basis. So people are getting more and more insights about what everybody else thinks. Um, and in so doing, building the customer experience and also rela their relationship. Um, the last point is pride. Um, recognize others and multiply mi milestones. So recognize others, find ways to recognize a customer's value uh, seek opportunities for a customer to feel their pride. Uh, you think that's a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, but treating people as your guest, um, saying thank you just simply for coming, asking, asking what they're looking forward to or what they enjoyed, these are examples of the one percenters that can be achieved through rigorous and effective training. I'm going to talk about the Sydney Opera House cause, shortly because it's quite unique when it comes to pride. Um, the NFL in the US recognised that um, people are on their phones right throughout the event. So they created the app and uh, so people are on that app enjoying the game through the app as well as what's going on in the field. Times Square, that's an immersive experience. We can almost play the game pre and post match. And again, it's just extending that uh, customer experience. So that's a that snapshot of customer experience 101 and some examples from Disney and World Tennis Association and so on, as they are uh, building their relationships with an ever-changing and more demanding customer base. Now, now let me just move to um, sales culture or customer-centric sales culture. Um, firstly, culture is based on shared beliefs built on an understanding of your organisation through the eyes of the customer. 
It's the understanding of your organisation through their eyes that establishes the lens to think about building this culture. Second, to grow customer loyalty, organisations must understand and, ex and um, evolve the customer experience. And the third point is adaptability and innovation is basically the new business as usual when it comes to building customer experience because it's such a competitive and technology-driven world. So the research from Millheimer Group, uh, they explored what it takes to be a customer-centric organisation. And the research identified three defining attributes which are up there on the screen. So what I'm proposing or putting to you, and again, they're described in this um, handout, uh, is in, if you're thinking about um, customer-centric culture from your perspective, in your organisation, have a think about it from these three things. And I'm just going to talk about it now. Customer at the core. I don't know how many times just in the last six months I've heard the expression, we place the customer at the centre of everything we do. And sometimes I, wonder, I sort of understand whether the person saying it actually either understands it or means it. It's kind of one of those corporate lines that's crept in over the last few months. So what does it actually mean? So Miller-Hyman uh, identified top performing sales organisations that can make the following statements. This is my effort explaining what that means. We understand customers' issues before we propose a solution. By the way, in the sales world, only 47% of the time that a proposal is presented are the client's needs actually fully understood. That means 53% of the time, the client's time is being wasted. Anyway, we understand, we understand our customers' issues before we propose a solution. We have formalised a compelling value proposition. Sales and marketing align in what our customers need. A couple of examples, Disney. Disney has a quality service compass with four points. And again, this has been being involved for, for quite some years. Guestology is the first point. The art and science of deeply knowing and understanding customers. Quality standards, this defined service goals um, and quality standards. Delivery systems, cast, setting and process. Cast, the people, setting, the part and the process of management and integration of bringing all that together. Sydney Opera House. Just let's have a look at the brand promise of the Sydney Opera House. I'm just going to read it. Uh, inspires conversation around culture and art. Helps visitors understand there's more to the Opera House than simply opera. Um, and paired with a shift in perspectives in a sculptural form of language. That's the Opera House itself. Uh, the Opera House is 18 months into a digital transformation program. They're taking all their systems and making it one. Um, they're soon to start rethinking their artistic strategy. Major challenge and constantly bal balancing that commercial viability with the artistic integrity. Um, and by the way, visitors value, this is the Lloyd survey, visitors value just being at the Opera House at 38% greater than their ticket price. 88% of Chinese um, cite the Sydney Opera House as the key reason for visiting Sydney before they go anywhere else in this country. Art Gallery in New South Wales, 1,000 high profile stakeholders, 30,000 subscribed members, 1,000 events each year, 350,000 disparate records. They've put a CRM in place to bring that all together so that it can actually know who their customer base and invite them to their events in a very customer-focused way. So that's the first. Conscious collaboration is the second. World-class organisations distinguish themselves through being excellent at collaboration. Uh, it's an enterprise theme for many organisations where people come together and they actually really believe it's their job to make this stuff happen through collaboration. They, they make statements like, our organisation is highly effective in allocating resources. Our management team is highly effective in helping advance opportunities. We know and leverage best practices of our top performers. So these are examples from an event management point of view, um, trying to provide, to think about a customer-centric sales culture. At Disney, they talk about the magic of collaboration. Magic of cast, magic of setting, magic of process, magic of integration. Um, these are guiding principles in terms of how the Disney cast um, collaborates to get that customer-centric sales culture happening. Um, now, Sydney Opera House. Uh, I've met a number of people at the, um, at the Opera House, people, creative, backstage, accounts, uh, front of house. They all love working at the house there's an incredible sense of pride. As somebody said to me once, I'm in the concert hall looking at the lighting and could see clearly that our people hadn't done the lighting for that particular event. 
it was a stuff up. And some other crowd that did not have the same sort of uh, pride in working at the Opera House had done the lighting and hadn't done the right job. Interesting thing for Sydney Opera House, they can have an event where they've got 2,000 people in the concert hall and 600,000 people online. What are they going to do with that customer experience over a period of time? It's a big challenge. Um, lastly, calibrated for success. Organisations can say in an average week our salespeople definitely spend time uh, with the customers. Compensation po policies are aligned. Um, uh, specific criteria for what we define as strategic clients. Um, Disney works to a definition of what a show is. Um, and in order, a priority, that's safety, courtesy, show and efficiency. People come together and they measure performance from those four perspectives. Um, uh, the previous group discussed uh, some management systems. I'm not going to spend time on this. If you'd like to uh, do some more research, just simply Google the forest away at this particular site. It'll give you some really good insights into what's available. So just to wrap up, um, here are some uh, best practices in terms of, um, in terms of um, customer-centric sales cultures just to have a think about. Common uh, customer-driven purpose. What is the reason for being of this event from a customer's perspective? Set a vision, top-down leadership. Uh, align customer experience to business objectives and brand promise. In my opinion, CX is not just a marketing exercise. Um, journey maps, defining moments, review, review, re, uh, review blockages. Align the organisation behind um, the customer relationship. Best people collaborate and accountable. Training and enablement, culture of coaching, make everything measurable. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've tried to do is to give you today some examples of uh, what organisations are doing to build a customer-focused sales culture. It's a journey that's probably never-ending, um, and it can be quite daunting no matter what size the organisation is. Handout provides some narrative and some models and so on, which hopefully will be helpful. I happen to be pretty passionate about this subject because I really believe, I've got a strong belief that a team can feel and be much better and much more successful by taking on the challenges and delivering more value to the customer. So if you want to take the challenge of growing your business, events, opportunities and your social purpose, then please, all I can say is be my guest. Thank you. <laughs>